The next author I'd love to introduce Mary Beth Haynes, a woman that my pets just love. <laughs> Mary Beth Haynes' passion lies in making a difference for animals and their gifts to humanity. She advocates on behalf of the language they speak. Since 2012, she has been recognized as a highly regarded animal communicator, communicator, I'm sorry, pet bereavement grief specialist, ordained minister, author, and speaker. Mary Beth was inspired to write her first book, The Power of Pets, after the loss of her beloved kitty. Our beloved pets communicate with us in many ways, and always with love. Mary Beth is very excited that you are here this evening, and looks forward to telling you all the many gifts animals have to share as our teachers, guides, and so much more. Welcome, please, Mary Beth. And so on this hobby. 
hobby farm, my brother, sister, and I, mother, father, we lived on this farm. We had 25 acres of land. It was a wonderful place to grow up, and we had so much space and freedom. And so if you were to think of a, a farm with animals on it, what type of animals might be there? Chickens? Dogs? Cats? Cats? Cows? Goats? 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 Horses? Horses? Alpaca? No? There are alpaca farms for sure. I didn't get the chance to have an alpaca as a pet, but I would have loved to. They are amazing animals, aren't they? So all of those, guinea pigs, rabbits, uh, geese, ducks, we've had, we had them as a pet at one point. And my father taught us from a very young age that when you give to an animal, they will give back to you. So I was thinking as I was growing up, well, okay, my horse Thunder, I need to make sure that I give him fresh hay every day. I need to make sure that his skull is clean. I need to make sure that he is groomed. I need to make sure that he has time for exercise. And yes, I did need to do all those things. And yes, he did give back to me from sharing that time together. But it wasn't until later on in life that I realized it's not just the physiological needs that these animals need. They need the connection to us because they're here for us. They're here as masters of unconditional love. We haven't mastered that yet. And I love to say yet, because I hope one day we will as humans master that unconditional love. Animals have mastered that. And so that teaching from a very young age um, really taught me a lot. And so these animals on the farm, I was, I would play with them. I mean, they were my buds, they were my companions, they were my family. I remember, you know, one of the many things I wanted to do when I grew up was become a teacher. And I remember when I wanted to become a teacher, they would be my students. So I'd be playing teacher and, you know, they would all be my students. And it really was the reverse, wasn't it? They really were my teacher. I just thought I was teaching them. So, fast forwarding from 1972 to about the year 2000. This little guy came into my life. He was with a friend of mine who wasn't able to care for him in the way that she was wanting to. And so I offered to invite him into my family. His name was Kitty. He was the most beautiful black-haired boy with green eyes and had the gift of gab. He talked, like literally talked. So if you were to envision hmm, a very low voice, uh, sounds kind of like a little boy, you would hear in the distance, not to your face, always in the distance, hello, hello, hello. And, but anytime I tried to get him to do that in front of somebody, it's like Mr. Snuffleupagus on Sesame Street. Remember? I can attest to yes. that, by the way. Yes, this is my husband Troy. It's not her imagination. When we first met, he didn't do it for you, remember? And then one night you heard him from a distance. Yeah. And I'm like, I told you, he talks. <laughs> so I've had many animals in my life. I will always continue to. It's just normal for me to have that. And what happened um, with Kitty, when he passed away, it was December 25th, so it was Christmas Day, 2011. But you know what? He picked the perfect day to die. Because if he would have picked Christmas Eve or the day after Boxing Day, my husband wouldn't have been there. I wouldn't have had a car to bring him in so we could help him pass peace peacefully with euthanasia. So he actually picked the day where we were together as a family and could remain together as a family. And I, I thank him for that. Christmases aren't the same since then, but I learned a lot from that experience. So with Kitty, um, I've, I've experienced death of animals. I've had them all my life. But with Kitty, with his death, there was something that was different. There was something that was a little bit harder to get over. All my animals I love dearly. And all my animals I feel uniquely from when they passed away. But with Kitty, I couldn't sleep in my bed for a week and a half. I slept on the couch. I just, I just had a really hard time. So there was something different. And I was at a crossroads when it came to what I was to do with my life and where I was going with it and, and all of that. And, and it was Kitty's passing that made me realize that I wanted to help up people in, in a 
certain way, and that was to help them heal when their pet passed away. And so when I did that, I was guided to write this book. So Kitty was the one that actually helped me write it. It was a very cathartic experience because my goal was to help other people heal from the loss of their pet. But really, ha really happened was Kitty helped me also heal from his death and the death of the other pets in my life as well. So in sharing this, um, to read an excerpt uh, from this, in this book I share seven tools. Now these seven tools were, were kind of channeled through and I thank Kitty for that because I believe they come from him. The nuts and bolts of the tools, I actually interviewed over 70 different organizations and companies and people with personal stories to share about animals that I was able to place in each each tool to kind of add to it. Um, you know how you get a book and you kind of look at the front, you know, so you go to the back, right? Well, I'm going to, I'm not going to go right to the back, but I am going to go to the back of the book and share something that I like to call gifts of many. So remember how I mentioned that I do I did some interviews for this. So this starts with a quote from a gentleman gentleman named Glenn Wilcox, and he is a, a professional pet photographer. So he says, to combat the grief of my dog's passing, I try to focus on the gifts he gave me in our 14 years together. The gifts that stand out the most was the communication in Bob's eyes. Now Bob was his dog, with the beautiful chocolate colored black. The eyes that spoke to me and said, pick me and I will love you forever, Glenn. Or the eyes that asked permission, is it okay if I lie with you on the couch? The eyes that would light up and say, yes, of course, I would love to go for a ride. Let's go. Pets give us such wonderful gifts if we only look for them and pay attention. So to read an excerpt, when we experience the feelings of loss, as within any type of traumatic experience we may have in life, the path can be challenging, perhaps rocky and unstable. We know that the loss of a loving animal companion and pet may be like losing a family member or close friend, and it is. The feelings we have inside include heartache, sadness, and pain. These can be unbearable at times, and often we may look as, at it as having no end in sight. We find it challenging to see the light which is supposed to be at the end of the tunnel. And I personally remember saying, like, what tunnel? I, I, everything just looks so dark, I can't even see the tunnel. Personally, after I was able to put the tools in this book into motion, I not only began to saw the tunnel, I began to see the light. The light was very small at first and perhaps a bit dim, but the more I followed these tools and the more I opened myself and gave myself permission to heal, permission to heal, the brighter the light became. Do I still have tears of sadness? Of course I do. But those tears of sadness have become easier to manage. The sadness never goes away, but it does get easier. I can promise you that. You see, I believe that you and your pet did not meet by accident. I believe that you, uh, that there was a reason why your pet came into your life and why you came into theirs. And I truly believe that you and your pet found each other at the exact right time that you were meant to. Pets give to us many things, companionship, friendship, unconditional love, laughter, and the feeling of being needed. All these are gifts, and when we realize the many gifts we have shared and received, knowing that these will always remain with us can bring us comfort as we so even though your animal companion is no longer here in the physical sense, your connection to them remains always. It's a wonderful gift that will stay with you to guide you and support you with a loving embrace and perhaps can bring your awareness to a deeper appreciation and thanking your loving pet for the many gifts he or she shared with you. So remember at the beginning we talked about this box and how it was empty. I invite you now as I open this box to take a look inside and see what you see, sense, or feel, and how it's overflowing with the wonderful, magnificent gifts that our pets share with us. Thank you so much from my heart for allowing me to share this with you today.